We are living through an energy revolution. The world is changing before our very eyes and bit by bit our lives are being powered by the power of the sun, the wind and the earth. It's a great time to be alive. A staggering 80% of the world's energy needs are still met by coal. Renewables are slowly coming online, but it simply takes time to build our solar, tidal and wind farms. But time is something we do not have. The world's climate is already changing and globally we need to step up the pace and move into our low carbon future. It's so easy to get depressed about global warming, but seriously, don't. As a planet, we already have the industrial know-how to get us through this climate problem. A model by two guys called Stephen Pakala and Rob Sokolow from Princeton University has been around for 10 years and shows us the answer. It's called the Stabilisation Wedge Scenario. So this is our concentration of our carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over time. At the moment we're about at 392 parts per million. And predictions are if we keep ticking along as we are, we're going to hit over 650 parts per million. Some people think it's a little bit less, loads of people think it's a lot more, at about 2050. Now the world at 650 parts per million is a pretty dire place to live. We're talking massive sea level rises, flooding of coastal areas, people moving countries. So this triangle represents the amount of carbon dioxide that we have to prevent from going into our atmosphere within the next 40 years. It's a bucket load. So the solution proposed by Pakala and Sokolo is to split this big problem triangle into wee wedges. So each of these wedges represent a different technology to reduce CO2 in our atmosphere. Now these technologies aren't science fiction like the flux capacitor out of Back to the Future. Each of these technologies have been demonstrated and proven to work on big scales. If we need to reduce carbon dioxide even further, we just add another wedge. So one of these wedges is energy efficiency. For homes, that's things like double glazing and turning up your lights, but there are a whole lot more options for energy efficiency on an industrial scale. Other wedges are carbon capture and storage, reducing reliance on cars, uh, biofuels, PV, solar power, wind. All of these options are gonna add up to reducing our carbon dioxide over time. So yes, deploying some of these technologies is gonna be expensive, but nowhere near as expensive as the big climate change events that are gonna be coming up in the future. We have the answer to our climate problem. We just need to stop debating it and move forward. The problem isn't too big. We need to embrace all the technologies available and move into our low carbon future. Wow.